Chris here and welcome to my channel and welcome to this week's reading vlog. And it is time for Polarthon! I'm so excited. I'm on Team Explorers and I am hoping to read a book for each prompt. Originally I have been planning on doubling up on the first two but I changed my mind and decided I'm just going to go for it and read a book for each prompt. As I'm on Team Explorers, my first prompt is to read an adventure. And for this, I'm going to be reading Rise of the World Eaters by Jamie Littler. This is the third and final book in the Frostheart series. And I'm going to assume that Ash goes on an adventure in this one. And I believe I have had it confirmed by somebody who has read this book that he does. So I will be reading this. I'm so excited to finally be able to read this. I've been trying to get to this for months. And I just, I'm so excited to be reading the end of Ash's story and to find out how things tie up because this is the end of a trilogy. I'm excited to be ticking a series off of my series to continue list because this will wrap that series up. And I think it's even more appropriate when our team captain is Gavin and Gavin adores Frostheart that I'm going to finish this series up as my very first prompt for the Explorer's Path and Polarathon. So I'm going to dive into this before bed and I'm going to see how much of this I can read. It's chunky, but I know it also has illustrations and it's middle grade and the print isn't tiny or anything like that. And on top of that, it's the conclusion to a series. Like I tend to read the later books in a series faster than the first books because I already know the world and the characters and all of that and I'm excited to get to the end and find out what is going to happen to them next so I'm going to read as much of this as I can before I just can't keep my eyes open anymore tonight and then hopefully I will finish this up tomorrow morning so I can move on to my next book but this is where I'm starting I'm so excited to be taking part in Polarathon and I will check in with you all again soon. Wednesday, which means we're on day three of Polarthon, and I thought I should check in because boy, do I have a lot to update you on. You want to say hi? No. He he's going to chase the birds. He saw a squirrel. That's more interesting than us, apparently. Anyways, Polarthon updates. Uh, first up, I finished. Rise of the World Eater by Jamie Lillard. This is the third and final book in the Frostheart series. I absolutely loved this book and the way this series ended, and I'm going to miss spending time with Ash and the crew of the Frostheart, but I'm excited to see what Jamie Littler writes next, and I will definitely be reading it because I have loved his Frostheart series and want more from him, and this completed the adventure prompt because I'm Team Explorers. Then I had to read a book with a cold word in the title, and this would also apply to the series title, and originally I had been planning on doubling up with Rise of the World Eater because it is part of the Frostheart series and Frost is Cold, but I decided I had time and I was feeling ambitious, so I read The Winter House Mysteries and said, with winter being my cold word, because I think of cold when I think of winter, so... This is the third and final book in the Winter House series, and this is a reread for me, and I was really excited to be able to read it in much closer proximity to its prequels, because I believe I read the first Winter House book, and then I waited like a year and read the second, and then I waited a year and read the third. This time I read the first book at the end of November and then I read the second book in December and then I I just read this one. So it was nice to be able to read them in a much closer time frame because it meant I hadn't forgot as many of the details. I love this series and while I would classify their main genre as mystery, 
there are fantastical elements in this series and it does take place in the winter so in my opinion that means they technically count as polar fantasy so this would be my second polar fantasy and another five star but again it was reread so i wasn't expecting you getting down cloud you want to say hi say hi cloudy Donner. I think Porkius was thinking about coming back over when I was showing off Cloudy, but he got distracted by a squirrel again. Anyways, I, um, I wasn't expecting to not love this book, so I'm glad I got to reread it. My next prompt was foil cover, and for this I read The Girl, the Cat, and the Navigator, as you can see that lovely foiling. So this follows a young girl named Una Brett, who longs to go on the sea and kind of follow in her father's footsteps but her father has no desire for her to set foot aboard his ship her family isn't very nice to her and so she's kind of lonely and isolated and she ends up taking things into her own hands and sneaking aboard her dad's ship so that she can go on an adventure and boy oh boy does she get one so this book Definitely has some fantastical elements, and it is set way up north in the cold, frigid seas, and I think this is another one that could count for polar fantasy. I think I'm going three and a half, 3.75 stars. I enjoyed this, but I wasn't, like, in love with it, and it's definitely not, like, a new fave or anything, but I did really enjoy the way this book was written and I definitely would recommend it to middle graders because I think that it could be a really fun book for them and I think as a middle grader I would have enjoyed this a lot more but I had a good time with it so at the end of the day that's really all that matters and then the last update I have for you yes I know we're only two days into Polarathon and I've already breezed through the first three books is I've started Sky Song by Abby Elphinstone so this is my book for Icy Magic and I do think it applies I'm about halfway through and we're following this girl named Eska who has been imprisoned by the Ice Queen and she ends up escaping with the help of this boy named Flint who was there to rescue his mom and ends up rescuing Eska instead. And Eska knows she's somehow important to the Ice Queen and isn't quite sure how but knows it has something to do with her voice. And she mentions certain things of, that she's seen the Ice Queen do that I count as icy magic, even though we haven't seen a ton of the Ice Queen, because obviously Asuka has been freed due to the help of Flint. But I suspect we will see more of that. It's definitely a polar fantasy, so I've got that checked off. So worst case scenario, I could always pivot to the Explorer's Path because there is, like I said, not a book on here that isn't technically a polar fantasy, but I don't plan to do that. I, th I think this counts as icy magic or why would she be called the Ice Queen? So I would... <laughs> Porky was just hanging off the top of my TV because a bird flew up off the top of the TV. I swear... You'd think by now he would know he can't actually catch anything he sees on the TV, but apparently not. Anyways, back to Sky Song. I, I think that given that she's the Ice Queen, any magic she does would be considered icy magic. So I think I think this is going to count. And there is the possibility that my last book might have icy magic, so I might be fine anyways. But I am enjoying this, and I'm maybe going to finish this tonight. I am starting to get a little bit sleepy, but I'm way ahead of schedule. And ideally, I would like to finish this vlog up tomorrow. So, yeah, basically, I was only going to do this vlog while I was reading my Polarathon picks, and I have a very good chance of finishing my Polarathon reads tomorrow. So we'll see if I can manage that, which honestly would be nice because it would mean I made a giant dent in my physical TBR, which I really needed to do because it was ginormous. And it allows me to get back to books I was reading before Polarathon without losing too many details. So 
we will see. I'm going to attempt to read at least another good chunk of this tonight, but I think there is a good chance I finish it. We'll see. I'll check back in with you though tomorrow and let you know what I'm doing. I need to get these lights off because the cats are bouncing all over the place. And I know if I turn some of the lights off, they'll chill out and they really need to because we all need to get some sleep. So I will check in with you guys again tomorrow. Friday morning and I wanted to give you an update. I finished Sky Song and I'm going to give this 4.25 stars. I really enjoyed this book. It did end up having icy magic in my opinion, so it definitely fulfills that prompt for Polarthon. I really enjoyed Aska and Flynn's journey and the way they grew as characters throughout the story. I really like the way Abby Elphinstone writes. This is the second book I've read by them and I've just really enjoyed both of them, so I will definitely be reading more from this author in the future. When I got done with that, I picked up Ember and the Ice Dragons by Heather Fawcett. This was my polar fantasy, though every single book I read was a polar fantasy technically, so it didn't really matter which one I picked up for the polar fantasy prompt. In this one, we're following a girl named Ember who was born a fire dragon, but her adoptive father has the ability to wield magic and turns her from a dragon into a young girl though she is still technically a dragon and she ends up going and staying with her aunt who lives in Antarctica on a research station and finds out about a hunt that is happening that is targeting the ice dragons that live down there and well she is against the killing of any dragon so she plans to find a way to help the ice dragons out and sabotage the hunt. I love this book. I gave it five stars. I loved following Ember on her journey and I love the magic in this book and seeing how the dragons worked and seeing Ember struggle with being human but not human but a dragon but not a dragon. I just I, I really really enjoyed this book and the way Heather Fawcett wrote this book and I believe she has another book out that may also be Polar Fantasy. So that may be something I look into for next year's Polarathon, but I really, really, really enjoyed this. So that means I have completed all of my reads for Polarathon, and I will just do a quick recap. I read Rise of the World Eaters by Jamie Littler for the adventure prompt, and I gave this book five stars. I read The Winter House Mysteries by Ben Guterstein for Cold Word in the title, and I gave this book five stars. I read The Girl, the Cat, and the Navigator by Matilda Woods, and I read this for foiling on the cover, and I gave this, I believe, three and a half stars. I read Sky Song by Abby Elphinstone for Icy Magic, and I gave this 4.25 stars, and then I read <laughs> Ever in the Ice Dragons by Heather Fawcett for Polar Fantasy, and I gave this book five stars. Not a bad Polarathon, if I do say so myself, considering I basically loved every book that I read, and even though I didn't necessarily love The Girl, the Cat, and the Navigator, I still enjoyed my read of it. So these are my reads for Polarathon. I would love to know what you have read if you participated in Polarathon. All of my social media, including my Discord, is linked below. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me polar-themed emojis, like this video, and subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!